Hello and welcome. New York-born Tony Curtis was one of the movie's most colourful characters. He was married six times, was one of Marilyn Monroe's first boyfriends, and had a reputation in Hollywood as a party boy and a ladies' man. Over a 60-year career, he appeared in more than 130 productions, playing a diverse range of characters. His movies included Houdini, The Boston Strangler, The Vikings, The Defiant Ones, Some Like It Hot, Spartacus, The Great Race, Sex and the Single Girl, Winchester 73, and TV series like McCoy and the Persuaders with Roger Moore. In 1981, he agreed to play Colonel Iago in Black Commando, a modern action drama version of William Shakespeare's Othello shot on locations in Spain. It was a movie he was less than thrilled with. After shooting the movie, Tony was a guest of Madame Imelda Marcos at her Manila Film Festival in the Philippines, where I caught up with him briefly. We spoke about Black Commando, but I began by asking him about his upbringing in the Bronx and Manhattan and his multiple marriages. At that point, he'd been married three times. Tony, you, um, you had a fairly uh, rough childhood growing up in the Bronx, and uh, I think you'd, it'd be fair to say that you've lived life fairly hard. What... what uh for you has been the toughest side of being in the business over what 34 35 years now i think the most uh, the most difficult thing of it is the concentration and dedicating your time to it see it's it's, it's a master that won't allow you many uh uh little periphery uh pleasantries you know you for an example you can't have a personal life that is a usual personal life you know you can't uh, have that kind of a life and have that kind of a profession. So that's where you suffer the most. And the quicker you realize that, the happier you're going to be. See, many actors and actresses won't accept that. They don't believe. They believe they can have both cakes. You know, they can have both sides of it, but they can't. And it takes them a number of years to begin to realize it. And once they begin to realize it, and one suffers or the other suffers, they start to drink a lot. They become disillusioned, jaded, unhappy. And that's what you've got to avoid. Right. But how tough was life growing up in the Bronx? I mean, we, we well, hear all sorts of the Bronx, stories about Manhattan. I, I, I grew up in Manhattan, a uh, little bit in the Bronx. And you've got to remember, that, that was in the late, uh, oh, early 30s, during the Depression. So, and there were different, different uh, how would you say, pressures put on life in those days. So you really can't equate the two. It was tough. It's as tough as it is today. But did, has, did it shape you very much? Well, yes, it? very much so. Yeah. Yeah. There is a anyone that is not uh, somehow somehow affected by your childhood and by the way your uh, behavior by your uh, feelings toward women and men are all shaped by that what, what about the, the marriages uh, you've had what four i think uh, over, over the I've years i've never been married i practice celibacy all my life you've got the wrong that's, guy that's that's spiritual is it oh no that it, no that, that's the guy spiritualism but, oh, oh, I've been married three times. Right, three I times, sorry. thought you were talking about somebody else. No, I was talking about you. Oh, I so, I mean, has that been part of, of, of the life? A lot of people, you know, like to stay together for 50, 60 years. Well, has it been easy no, for you no, to go from all, one to the all, other? No, not at all, I don't think so. You have a lot of friends in your lifetime, don't you? Sure. Men and women. Sure. You know, it doesn't have to be predicated or based on sex or passion mm. or nothing. It's on intelligence, uh, friendliness, being kind and considerate, you know? And it's possible to uh, have friends like that all your life. You know, yeah. you can get married or not married. Uh, I don't find being married one way or the other uh, that much difficult, you know. Mm. There is a time in your life when you're working a certain way where you, you don't have a chance to get out a lot. And it's safer to be married because you've got somebody looking after you. Right. But other than that, it's... Uh, Any regrets about, uh, about going through the three marriages and so on? I have regrets about nothing. Really? Nothing at you, all. You said once that you're a very moody person. Very moody. Really? Yeah. But that because moody, of the pressures well, of, the, of the business? Gets, you know, I find that the moodiness now gets less and less because I'm getting happier and happier. I'm facing the realities of myself, you know? So that's what makes life a lot more interesting. Right. Well, you've displayed a, a marvellous sense of humour, and um, we, the Seven Network happens to own the McCoy series of movies, yes. which is a, a lot of oh, fun. Oh, yes, they're a lot of fun. How, how much of the character in that did you actually put into it? I mean, was it all written of out? It. All really? of it. No, yeah. it wasn't written out at all. You know, they just kind of gave you a quick sketch line of what the shot was. Yeah. And I'd figure out to play uh, an Argentinian millionaire or a guy that was uh, uh, a funeral parlor attendant. You know, so I get a chance to 
invent those people. Right. And, and uh, with the McCoy movies, how did that come about in the first place? I mean, did they come to you specifically to do they the series? They came to me or? with that series, that concept of the series. Right. And uh, how many did you do? Six or seven, I, I think it was? six of them. Right. A lot of fun for you? A lot of fun, a lot of hard work. I couldn't mm. have done more than six of them. Right. Now, the latest film that you've done is uh, a modern version of Othello with yes. uh, Max Boulois. Yes. Uh, is that a, is it, can you tell us a little bit about the storyline without giving too much away? Is it a, yeah. an action? It's an action movie. It takes place in some other films. Uh, I'm very disappointed in the way the film turned out. I think it's been very clumsily edited, and it's not, it doesn't play as well as it should. But that's the ball game. What are you right. going to do? And what about new movies? Any, any other things oh, coming up? Oh, there are a number of projects coming up. What right. they are yet, I'm not sure. Are you particularly bothered about wanting to make another film? No, not film particularly. Right. I just want to hang out with my friends. Great. Uh, we've got a... and I want to hang out. Apart from his lengthy movie career, Tony Curtis was a prolific painter, and many of his works, both original and lithographs, are available through online art brokerages today. His final film was a romantic drama, David and Fatima, made in 2008. Tony died in 2010 at the age of 83 at his home in Henderson, Nevada.